Ladies and gentlemen, as usual, I will not try to add something of a very specific nature. Let me share with you my worries about where we stand these days with resources. I observed very keenly from Berlin, where I live now most of the time, the last German election for German parliament. You all heard about it. You all are waiting, we all are waiting for the results of this election in terms of who is going to govern the fourth largest economy in the world. I hope it's not going to be a medical person, but that's just besides the point. When you analyze what has been written down as election programs in Germany of all parties, you find that not a single one has worried about a concept, a systems concept of resource use and what the market could and should do in the future to approach sustainability. Not a single one. The Green Party managed to publish 320 pages on three pages of 320, you will find a few sentences about resources. And they are so wrong, it makes you sick. And when you listened to these television debates, again, in a country that is proud to have furthered environmental concerns very much, and still is in many ways, but you, when you then listen to these people, and not a single time was the word ecosphere or environment even mentioned not even for Mr. Trittin, the guy who supposedly is so important for protecting our environment in Germany and in the world. I can only say I'm very happy we have some beautiful people of the Green Party in Brussels. You'll hear from them. We have some very good people in the Green Party in Germany too, but you don't hear much about it. And they are apparently not in the forefront. We have a desperate situation as far as I'm concerned in reality. I'm fully aware of the road map uh, from Brussels, which is excellent. I know, of course, a little bit Achim Steiner. I know his predecessor very well. And he told me, not even six years ago, Mr. Well, I don't mention the name, you know his predecessor. He said, leave me alone with your resource problems. I have other problems. 80% of my problems are energy. Ah, well. Now, let me just tell you that as far as I'm concerned, the real problem with our energy situation is, in fact, the resource intensity of the whole economy, including the production of what we call the technical energy, which is the only energy we actually use, except in agriculture in a very few areas. Now, I would like to make the first, for me, very important point. You all know what politics is about, the financial sector, and all these things, which are all very important. But it strikes me as funny that in the fourth biggest economic economy in the world, during an election campaign, which is extremely important for the next four to eight years, who knows, not a single time was the plan presented for what are we going to do on a systems level in Germany, in Europe, for the environment. Now, let us remember the key issue, the root cause for all environmental problems from a physical point of view is in fact the resource intensity. I don't say efficiency, I said intensity of the products and the services on the market. And unless we tackle those, unless we can come to a fact of 10 or 20, my friend Ashok from India says a fact of 50, we are not a fact of 10 or four or five. It's going to be a fact of 50 in India. I don't know what it's going to reach it. That is the first point. The second is, we all know that our basic problems are, we in fact disturb these services and functions every day, billions and billions of times around the world. And in fact, we destroy many of them and the results we see begin to see in climate change and many other problems. And the problem is, we cannot reproduce these functions and services. Now, since that's known, and since it has been described, I don't know how many times in the last 20, 25 years, why is government not even talking about the only problem which, in fact, we cannot fix if we kill it 
we kill it, we kill it. There's always a way to fix financial problems, or health problems, social problems, what have you. But there is no way to solve that problem. And for that reason, and I think, I hope that this meeting and many others can support this feeling that government, you have no choice. If you're really meaning to help survival of human beings on this earth and this planet, by God, among other things, which are all very important, if you don't care, take care of the functions and the services of the environment, stop talking and stop spending our money because you're not talking about approaching sustainability. In fact, you do exactly the opposite. That's the first thing I just, by the way, there is a paper out which I'm sure you can get, which, uh, I, what do I call it? Uh, resource turnabout, Ressourcenwende. We all talk about energy wende, energy turnaround. I think, basically, we should really first talk about resource wende. We should really make sure, because the, what we see in the energy area is, of course, largely connected to the resource intensity of our economies. Now, what is also very strange is that not a single, not a single environmental protection policy in Europe or any other country is in fact is different today, is systems oriented, as opposed to doing exactly what we're doing. We're waiting for a problem, then we have Madame Thatcher agreeing, yes, there is a climate problem, and then everybody gets dizzy and starts spending lots of money. Everybody's doing energy research. I've been told, I don't know, I cannot check these numbers. The commission, I'm sure we can commission at some, have a billion euros somewhere for energy research, and if you ask, and how much is there for? Resource research, well, maybe a hundred, I don't know, a hundred thousand, maybe a, bill, a million or what have you, but it's nothing compared to the energy. What we are doing is we wait for the problem, and in retrospect, we then get busy. And what we are doing, and that's exactly what we're doing with the energy problem right now, we take that, it is an extremely serious problem. We don't have to discuss that. But if we concentrate on that, and say we have to fix that, which is fine. But I'll tell you just a little story how we actually do it. We all, I hear time and over again, the hybrid car is one of those things we have to build because in fact it saves energy compared to the normal car as we have them today. Well, I'll give you a few, I'll give you a few numbers. We save what, 20% gasoline, something like that. I don't even care, say 30%. What we are in fact doing is we invest twice the quantity of material resources, and in fact a lot of the water part too, but on the material side, twice. The ecological rucksack of a hybrid is twice as big as for a normal quote-unquote car that is running on the road since many years. So we come from roughly 40 tons to roughly 80 tons but we do save something like one and a half tons or something of gasoline. Isn't that beautiful? We have made a decision. The climate change is far more important than anything else. I don't believe that because all over, billions and billions of times every day, we are using and wasting resources and then we concentrate on that. We spend billions in Germany, public money, private money, and if you listen to the dis debate of the German car makers the last few weeks again about the fleet limits of emissions, you heard what the German car producers are doing in the city. This is just one of the points why, in fact, this retrospect business take a single problem, take CO2, take six climate important emissions. We have 250,000 different emissions that we're putting in the air. Are we going to do all that for every year? Of course not. I'm a chemist, so I know what I'm talking about. But we don't know much about something like three or 4,000 emissions. Are we going to do that for all these emissions? Of course not. Because what we really have to do is finally move to the beginning of the, of the economy and say, can we not lower dramatically the resource productivity the resource intensity, increase resource productivity, side up front and see what happens. We have heard about, well, we have to, we have problems with the circular economy. Of course, increase the price of resources, I think it will be a long way. So 
please look at this paper if you have the time. There are eight areas which are extremely wrong at this time, including the so-called growth debate, which I cannot hear anymore. Maybe Paul Aikens is going to tell you a few things about that. Thank you very much.